Good evening. I call the March 12th, 2024 regular board meeting of the Richland II Board of Trustees to order. The agenda for tonight's meeting has been published and made available publicly. May I please have a motion regarding the approval of the agenda? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Nash. I move to approve the agenda for the March 12th, 2024 regular board meeting. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Mrs. Nash, seconded by Mrs. Agostini. Is there any discussion? Ms. Nash, is that correct? That is correct. All right, board members, please vote. The vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. We'll move on to item 4.1, 4.1, executive session. May I please have a motion to go into executive session? Mr. Chair. Mrs. Washington. I move to convene an executive session for the purpose of discussing student appeals, student admission requests into the district's adult ed program, contractual matter regarding school property, personnel matter regarding multi-year contracts and employment recommendations and certified releases. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Mrs. Washington, seconded by Mrs. Agostini to go into executive session. Is there any discussion? Is that correct on the screen, Ms. Washington? All right, board members, please vote. Vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. We will now enter executive session. May I have a motion to end executive session? Mr. Chair. Ms. Agostini. I move that we adjourn executive session at 7.02 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Mrs. Agostini, seconded by Dr. Scott to end executive session. Is there any discussion? Board members, please vote. Vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. <clears throat> we will now move on to the inspirational moment and pledge of allegiance. Mrs. Tamika Washington will introduce tonight's guest. Good evening. Tonight, I'd like to welcome my special guest from Center from Inquiry, Faith Washington, under the leadership of Dr. White Cotton, and from Bridge Creek Elementary School, Hannah Jones, under the leadership of Principal Robinson. They will present our inspirational moment in honor of women's history. Jones, a second grade student at Bridge Creek Elementary School. And this is my friend, Faith Washington, a kindergartner at Center for Inquiry. It's a special time called Women's History Month, and we want to celebrate some amazing women in Richland, too. There are some women like Anna Boyd, Mrs. Lottie Chisholm, former trustee Melinda Anderson, and Dr. Moore, who has made history in our district. We also want to acknowledge all of the, the women serving on the board and working for Richland too. Can you please stand up so we can celebrate you? <laughs> Tonight 
Today's reading is a reminder of how awesome you all are. I am. I am. I am beautiful. I am brave. I am capable. I am smart. I am creative. I am kind. I am talented. I am blessed. I am loved. I am magical. I am important. I am joyful. I am confident. I am forgiving. I am amazing. I believe in myself. I am e enough. I am me. The end. Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> you know how Do you know it? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I am grateful you guys came out and, and presented that to us tonight. That was great. Thank you. We'll now move on to item 6.1. May I please have a motion regarding the approval of the consent agenda? Mr. Chair. Ms. Washington. I move to approve the consent agenda for the March 12, 2024 regular board meeting. Is there a second? Second. Is that Mrs. Porter? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Motion has been made by Mrs. Washington, seconded by Mrs. Porter uh, to approve the agenda, or approve the uh, consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Is that correct on the screen, Ms. Washington? All right, well, board members, please vote. The vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. We will now move on to public participation. I have two individuals have, that have signed up to address the board tonight. You'll be given three minutes to address the board. To assist with timing, the lights on the table in front of me will change colors from green to yellow to red. When you have 30 seconds remaining, the light will turn yellow. When your time is up, the light will turn red and you will hear an audible tone indicating your time to speak has expired. Before we begin, I will remind you that our meetings are, live, are streamed live and recorded. According to policy BEDH, comments from the public should not include gossip, defamatory words, or abusive and vulgar language. The policy also prohibits in public session any expression of personal complaints about individual school personnel or any other person connected with the school system. Specific student or personnel issues should be handled through the appropriate procedures as indicated in the district policy. Questions asked during public participation typically will be referred to a staff member for a response at a later time. Our first speaker tonight will be Ethan Lopez.
Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I had the opportunity to have a conversation with Dr. Moore the other day at Westwood High School. I brought up the zoning for Westwood and how it was zoned back in 2012 and how this office decided to take all of the poor neighborhoods surrounding other high schools and sent all of those poor kids to Westwood. I then brought up how Blythewood High School is four minutes down the road from Westwood and their poverty rate is less than ours. You tell me how that happens without gerrymandering and economic discrimination. I took note that when I brought that up, that both district personnel with Dr. Moore then turned around and looked at their cell phones, which just proves that this office turns a blind eye to almost everything. Our teachers and admin have been screaming loud but professionally about this issue, and obviously they aren't being listened to. But I can scream as loud and unprofessionally as I want because I have nothing to lose. And sometimes you have to speak to people in ways they understand. And professionally is obviously not working. If any of you ever turn your back to me or Dr. Moore or our teachers again while well, we are talking about the problems you all created, I can assure you that I can be a bigger headache than I already am. Dr. Moore then said to me, we cannot do all that work within the eight months I've been here. It's impossible. Really, you tell that to the teachers who are expected to put in 100 plus grades a week before and after school tutoring, getting their ninth grade students who are on a sixth grade math level up to grade level within eight months so they can score well on their EOCs, following district pacing guides, having classroom observations from people in this office who haven't been in the classroom for over 15 years. I can assure you that within the eight months you've been here, some changes to the school zones could have or been started. You then asked, what would you do to fix it? Well, if I was in your position, I would abuse the last eight months working with my team, teachers, and school admin to make sure we have a fair zoning system for our students no matter what their economic status is. So every child has, has equal opportunities to thrive. Dr. Moore, I encourage you to gather your facts and remember the difference between opinions and facts because you can't always answer tough questions with a question just because you don't know the answer to it. I know it does get better than this. You just have to put the work in. It is possible. Westwood is not as it is classified by other people as ghetto. We are not out of touch and we are especially not stupid. The majority of the people who work in this office are out of touch and lack the basic common sense every person should have. Westwood was built to fail. We did not make it that way. Those people did and those who made the zoning unfair and non-equitable did. We have a chief diversity, equity, and inclusion officer to make sure things like this don't happen. But they have and they continue to happen. So I'm not sure why we are wasting over $150,000 a year on a position that has failed to do her job over and over again. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Latanya Gregory. Good evening, board members and superintendent. My name is Dr. Latanya Gregory. I am a third grade teacher at Rice Creek Elementary. At Rice Creek Elementary, we're all responsible for sponsoring groups. I sponsor a group called um, Girls Talk for fifth grade girls. And I am here today to propose uh, mentoring for girls in middle and high school. Um, mentorship plays a critical role in the personal and academic developments of our students, particularly um, guiding and empowering young women to achieve their fullest potential. In B. Gregory Giving, we strive for equity and excellence in education. It is imperative that we address the unique needs and challenges our female youth face each day. B. Gregory Giving has five major benefits that we offer to our girls. Number one, we provide a personalized guidance. We provide personalized guidance and support through our regular interactions and mentorship services. Students receive valuable advice, encouragement, and constructive feedback tailored to their unique strengths and aspirations. Number two, at B. Gregory Giving, we help build confidence and self-esteem. Mentorship programs create safe spaces for girls to voice their concerns, explore their interests, and build confidence in their abilities um, to move forward in life. Number three, we focus on career exploration and skill development. Mentors serve as role models for girls who don't have one at home. They share their experience with these girls. They provide insights um, and expertise on various fields. Number four, fostering leadership and empowerment. Through mentorship, we have l discussions led by career-driven women who are ready to pour into our girls. Lastly, 
Number five, mentorship um, creates supportive networks for our girls. In conclusion, B. Gregory Giving Mentorship Program will play a pivotal role in empowering young females to realize their full potential and become future leaders in their respective roles. By investing in mentorship initiatives, we demonstrate our commitment to fostering inclusive learning environments where all girls feel valued, supported, and empowered to succeed. I urge the school board to consider implementing B. Gregory Giving Mentoring Program for girls in grades 6 through 12 as a strategic priority for promoting academic excellence and equity and success for students in our district. Thank you for your attention to this important matter, and I look forward to hearing from you guys very soon. I got four seconds. I am hosting um, a nonprofit organization session on Saturday. Um, on Longtown Road, I have invited girls from our middle and high schools to come out to this free event where we're going to have career women pour into them. Thank you. Thank you. We will now vote on executive session items. May I please have a motion regarding student appeals? Mr. Chair. Mrs. Agostini. I move to deny the appeal for student number one. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Mrs. Agostini and seconded by Mrs. Nash. Is there any discussion? Ms. Agostini, is that correct? That says students one and two, did you say? I just said student number one. All right, is that correct? That is correct. All right, board members, please vote. The D is missing in deny. Okay. <laughs> All right, the vote is five yes, two no. The motion carries. May I have a motion regarding student number two? Mr. Chair. Ms. Agostini. I move to deny the appeal for student number two. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Mrs. Agostini, seconded by Mrs. Nash. Is there any discussion? Is that correct, Ms. Agassini? That is correct. All right, board members, please vote.
The vote is three yes, four no. The motion fails. May I please have a motion regarding student number two? Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. Scott. I move to um, for student number two to attend Blythewood Academy for the remainder of the school year. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Dr. Scott, seconded by Mrs. Nash. Is there any discussion? Dr. Scott, is that correct? That's correct. All right, board members, please vote. The vote is six yes, one no, the motion carries. May I please have a motion regarding the student admission request into the district's adult education program? Mr. Chair. Ms. Porter. I move that we approve students numbers one through four into the district's adult education program. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Ms. Porter, seconded by Ms. Nash. Is there any discussion? Ms. Porter, is that correct on the screen? Yes, sir. Board members, please vote. Vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. May I please have a motion regarding the employment recommendations and certified releases? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Nash. I move to approve the employment recommendations and certified releases as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Ms. Nash, seconded by Dr. Scott. Is there any discussion? Is that correct on the screen, Ms. Nash? That is correct. All right, board members, please vote. Vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. We will now move to unfinished business. Action requested. Uh, item 9.1, policy revision on policy BBA, board powers and duties. May I please have a motion regarding the policy revision of policy BBA, board powers and duties. Mr. Chair. Mrs. Agostini. I move to approve policy revision, policy BBA, board powers and duties. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Mrs. Agostini, seconded by Dr. Scott. Is there any discussion? All right, I would, I would like to make a comment. I, I've thought a lot about our policy revisions here, and quite honestly, 
there's certainly nothing wrong with what we're doing, but if, if I if I had my way, we would have less policy, uh, less committees in our policy. Uh, I've, I've noticed, been, I've been reading some about other policies in other districts, and they have less standing committees. In fact, some of them have no standing committees. And I just wanted to share with everyone in here, as well as the public, that uh, as board chairman, I have received a lot of emails and a lot of uh, comments where our committees tend to. Um, oh, it's on BBA. Well, BBA. It's powers of duty. Okay. Hang on. It, pl please, uh, I'll be 60 this year, so please allow me just a moment to have a senior moment. I'll tell you what, let's all forget the last minute happened. <laughs> it never happened, okay? A motion has been made by Mrs. Agostini and seconded by Dr. Scott. Okay. This is on visiting schools and stuff, isn't it? Okay, okay. I do the best with the brain I have, I'm sorry. Now, okay, any discussion other than, like I said, the last minute never happened? All right. That is correct on the screen, Ms. Agostini, is that correct? It is. Okay, board members, please vote. The vote is six yes, one no, the motion carries. We'll move to items 9.2, proposed comprehensive health education advisory committee. May I please have a motion regarding the proposed comprehensive health education advisory committee? Mr. Chair. Ms. Agostini. I move to approve the proposed comprehensive health education advisory committee. Is there a second? Second. Is that Ms. Porter? Okay, thank you. All right, motion has been made by Mrs. Agostini, seconded by Ms. Porter uh, to approve the committee. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman? Ms. Nash. Um, I have still have great concern um, with the list that we have, not because any of these people are not qualified, but part of the reason the legislator put the comment in there that the board should, should may be the ones to choose this committee is because we were voted in to be the voices for the people that we speak for, our constituents. And not having members who are parents not associated with the district, um, I think is a big problem for me because we don't have an outside voice. And again, while I believe all of these people are qualified, I think there are some misses on here. And as a board, we are supposed to be handling a lot of things, and we've all talked about it, that we weren't going to delegate um, everything to administration. And for something like a health advisory board that directly affects our constituents, their students, our students, their children, we really should have a voice, more of a voice, in voting on this. And so for that reason, I won't be supporting this tonight. Thank you, Ms. Nash. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Chair. Ms. Uh, Ms. McFadden. Um, yes, so I did send the, um, an email to all of my board members, so I'd just like to stick to my script and say I would like to begin by stating that I do not know many of the people that were selected to be on this committee. So my efforts are not to direct opposition to the person selected, um, but as it relates to board duties. In the past, policies have been made that shift the responsibilities and duties of the board to the administrative staff. This committee is one such of those responsibilities. In the, the defense of uh, the staff and Ms. Gregory, she stated at our, um, our board workshop last week that this is a practice that has been done in the district for some time now. However, our board norm states that we're not going to continue to do things just because that's the way they've always been done. With the concerns about library books, instructional materials, and gender identity being at the forefront of discussions, I believe that this is a great opportunity for the board to be involved in the process of selecting committee members to serve on the Comprehensive Health Education Advocate 
advisory committee that will have the opportunity to select the curriculum for our fourth and fifth graders as it pertains to puberty, hormones, sexual activities, and growth during their adolescent years of development. Having policies that consistently move the duties and responsibilities from the Board of Trustees to the administrative staff poses several concerns. One such concern is addressing more is adding more responsibility to our already overburdened staff. We have heard from many district office staff members that speak of having so much work to do that they need to add more people to their departments. Another such concern is the consolidation or elimination of school boards. If the school board continues to pass our duties on to the administrative team for them to do all of the heavy lifting, then I can see cause for discussions for consolidating or eliminating school boards um, but from the conversations that are already being had in upper levels of government. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Uh, is there any other discussion? Uh, I, I would like to... I would like to read, just so the public knows exactly what this is, I would like to read the, the paragraph out of the law. Um, it says, local school boards may use the instructional unit made available by the board pursuant, pursuant to section 59-32-20, or local boards may develop or select their own instructional materials addressing the subject of reproductive health education, family life education, and pregnancy prevention education to assist in the selection of components and curriculum materials, curriculum materials, each local school board shall appoint a 13 member local advisory committee consisting of two parents, three clergy, two health professionals, two teachers, two students, one being the president of the student body of a high school, and two other persons not employed by the local school district. And, and I just wanted to, I, I'm, I'm also not gonna support the the committee that has been proposed to us, and it's nothing, it, it's, it's nothing personal to anybody on the committee. I just personally think that, uh, I, I don't think a couple of the people, uh, I, I don't approve, I mean, let's face it, we're here to approve or not approve, and I, I do not approve a couple of the names on there, and so I'm gonna not vote to sustain this committee. Uh, if, it, if, it's, if it passes, and then great, these people can work with us, and, and I hope they'll do a good job, but I do have concerns about a couple people. And anyway, is there any other discussion related to this? All right, Ms. Agostini, is it, is it on the board as it should be? It is. Okay, thank you. Board members, please vote. Vote is four yes, three no, the motion carries. We will now move to section 10, new business, no action requested. Uh, we have the proposal for the 2025-2026 school year calendar. The agenda item in this section is regarding the proposal of the 2025-2026 school year. Dr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will have Dr. Marshallin Franklin, our Deputy Superintendent, present this report and introduce uh, the person standing next to her, <laughs> the lovely person. Thank you, Dr. Moore. And we do acknowledge we're not nearly as adorable as the previous two young ladies that stood here. So thank you for bearing with us. Maybe if you stand on the stool. Perhaps. <laughs> And so I um, stand tonight to present to the board the work of our district calendar committee. The calendar committee consisted of student, parent, and employee representatives. Please, uh, joining me tonight uh, in this presentation is Ms. Kiana Keels, one of our parent representatives on the committee. Other members of the committee are also present tonight, if they would stand. I think we have three here, we have one of our students, one of our classified um, employees, and one of our teachers. So thank you for serving on the committee and for being here tonight. 
So as an ex officio a member of the committee, I guided the process but had no decision making power. What is being shared with you tonight is indeed the work of the calendar committee. To get the development of the calendar um, process underway, committee members were tasked to create draft calendars based on specified um, criteria. And so the guidelines listed on the screen there were criteria that were expected to be a part of all of the draft calendars. The second list that you see are recommendations. So these are um, features of the calendar that would be um, great to have, that have been preferred in years past, but weren't necessarily requirements. And then the last list on your screen are considerations. So this would be like the cherry on top of a Sunday. Um, again, just would be awesome to have, um, but not necessarily required. And so our um, committee members uh, worked diligently to create calendars that um, met as many of these uh, features as possible. So let's talk a little bit about how the calendar was developed. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Um, the first time that Dr. Franklin met with us, she walked us through the criteria, which was fantastic. Without that guidance, we wouldn't have even known how to get started. And so with that guidance, our committee worked together and we created eight draft calendars. So we submitted them. And the district administration took those calendars and then went through the criteria. Does this meet what's supposed to be there? Do we have 180 days and so on and so forth? And after we discussed it as a committee, we took those eight draft calendars and shrunk it down to a list of six to move forward. And this is my favorite part of it is when we took the calendars and gave it back to the community, back to the stakeholders. You know, I, there were 15 of us meeting in the room, but this went out to groups, our, our people people who are involved in our district, like our classified staff advisory council, our parent advisory council, our teacher forum, our principals, our assistant principal council, and the superintendent's cabinet. And so they let us know how they felt about those six calendars. And that was crucial for us to be able to move forward. From there, we were able to take their feedback and make adjustments. You know, maybe this date got shifted to that date or um, this work date got moved to later in the calendar. We went based on what we were hearing from our community. And we took those six calendars and shrunk it down to three. Those three calendars were then shared with our parents and our employees in the district by email. And that group of people then voted on the calendar of their choice. So on the screen um, are the results of the voting. So we had 20, I'm sorry, 2,925 um, votes submitted. The percentages listed represent the responders who fall into the designated group. For example, of the 2,925 responders, 35% of them were employees. As mentioned earlier, survey participants were given three calendar options, calendars A, B, and C. The most significant difference between the three calendars was that calendar B had six teacher work days before the start of the school year and an extended long weekend in March, and calendar C has a week-long Thanksgiving break. Here you see the outcome of voting overall, as well as the outcome by group. So you'll notice that calendar C was the preferred calendar among each group. So it was the preferred calendar among employees, among parents, as well as that group of em employee who are both parents and employees. And it was the preferred calendar overall. It is customary that district administration proposes just one calendar to the school board for consideration. And based on the outcome of the calendar development process, it is the recommendation of district administration that the board approves the calendar that received the most votes, which is calendar C. Ms. Keels will um, tell you about the features of calendar C as it is the calendar she created as a member of the district calendar committee. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. So the calendar that we're proposing to you starts the first day of school for students on a Wednesday. We knew that that was something that was very important to our community members to start midweek. The least preferred day to start the school year is on Monday. <laughs> Uh, calendar C has a nice long weekend in October, which can serve as sort of like a fall break. It's certainly when my personal children will want to go to the state fair. Uh, calendar C has, like Dr. Franklin mentioned, a week-long Thanksgiving break. Um, gosh, I love a, a week-long Thanksgiving break. When that's consistent with this year's calendar, um, 
Next, Next year's, year's calendar. calendar. Thank you. Next year's calendar, which also has a week-long Thanksgiving break. Amazing. And um, when the students return from winter break, there's going to be a work day before they return. And that's really important um, as a former teacher in the district. We really, really needed that day to get planning done, to switch over from first semester, to print out new schedules. I mean, that's just critical. And the school year ends for students before Memorial Day. Love it. <laughs> and we wanted to make sure we honor that Memorial Day weekend, which is why the teacher work day following the student's last day is that Tuesday. So that employees get the full Memorial Day weekend before returning to close out the year. Mr. Chair, that concludes the presentation of the 2025-2026 school year calendar. Okay, thank you both. Uh, board members, is there any questions at this point about the calendar? No questions, just a comment. Thank you guys for taking the time to get this calendar. And I have received many um, phone calls from teachers and staff, and they really like that. The only disappointment that I do have, and it has nothing to do with you guys, is parents always want a survey and they always want to be involved, and teachers as well. And then when I saw the number of responses, I'm a little sad about that, but happy about the calendar that you have. So kudos to the team. Thank you so much. All right, well, th thank you guys. <clears throat> All right, we will now look at the agenda for our next meeting for the March 26, 2024 board meeting. Dr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next board meeting will be March 26, 2024. We will once again have a public input session for the budget that will begin at 5 p.m. The regular scheduled board meeting for business items will be called to order at 5.30 p.m. And then we will move to executive, um, we'll call to order, then we'll have approval of the agenda and move to executive session. In our executive session, we will talk about student appeals, student admission request into the district's adult education program, receipt of legal advice, this is your litigation update, breach of contracts, employment recommendations and certified releases. We will release to the public, release from the, uh, the executive session to public session at 6.30 p.m. Followed by the inspirational moment and Pledge of Allegiance. Move to special recognitions where we will recognize state and national award recipients. Followed by the consent agenda. We will have approval of the consent agenda which will include approval of minutes from previous meetings, classified employment releases and in-district transfers, local board approved courses for 2024-2025, and our English language arts textbook adoption grade six through 12. Followed by public participation. Once we have concluded public participation, we'll move into voting for executive session items, which would include student appeals, student admission requests into the district's adult education program, breach of contracts, employment recommendations, and certified releases, and as needed for items discussed in executive session. We'll move to section 10, which is unfinished business action requested, which is voting on the 25, 2025 2026 school calendar, followed by new business, no action requested. You'll receive an update on chronic absenteeism, as well as a safety and security committee update. We'll then dis uh, review the draft agenda for the April 9th, 2024 meeting. And if needed, we'll have a second public participation, executive session, and voting on executive session items. We'll conclude with board and superintendent comments and then adjourned. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Uh, Dr. Moore, we need to add tonight's uh, item 4.5 in the executive session. We need to add that to next meeting's executive session. Mm -hmm. Board members, are there any revisions or additions other than what I just mentioned that you would like to see added to the March 26, 2024 agenda or to a future agenda? I have had some 
well, let me preface this. We, we, there was a, um, an opinion offered by the, or issued by the Attorney General's Office in 2019 regarding uh, Freedom of Information Act. Uh, and, and we have decided that, that we should do things a little differently here after reading this opinion. And one of the things is we will be noticing uh, meetings that we may, have, we may not have noticed in the past because we believe the spirit of that law uh, requires us to do that. And our agenda planning meeting is one of those meetings that we're concerned about having uh, this not noticed. I've talked with Dr. Moore about this, and we, will, we are not planning to have agenda planning meetings in the near future. This is our agenda planning meeting. So if there's things you would like to see added to the agenda, uh, tonight would be the night to add those things to it. Mr. Mr. Chair. <laughs> Ms. Agostini. Yeah, I, I would strongly discourage that from happening. While I appreciate it, I'm, I'm quite sure that there are things that are going to be coming up between now and the time that you have the agenda setting meeting. So um, well, I, I appreciate I, your words, but that's my input. Well, I, I appreciate that, but I would like to point out that this meeting was going to be tomorrow. We've changed, we've moved the meetings up to the Wednesday after the board meeting, and under those circumstances, I mean, we had decided to do that a couple of weeks ago so that we could get the information to board members quicker so we, everybody would have more time to look at the uh, things that we, we need to decide on. And 12 hours will not make a lot of difference on those regards. That, that's, what, that's what I would like to do, and the superintendent and I have discussed that. I, I don't, board policy doesn't uh, specify that we have that meeting. It does specify uh, we changed it to include others in the meeting in if we have the meeting, but it doesn't say we have to have the meeting. Uh, but but that that's anyway, any, any, I have a any question thoughts? then. Yes, ma'am. So based upon that, what's decided at the board meeting tonight for our draft agenda, there'll be no variance then in two weeks when we come. That is not necessarily true. Just like last week, uh, one week ago when we had our board workshop, we decided at that workshop to go ahead and add uh, the item tonight on the uh, health advisory committee because we felt it was, it was a timely matter and we needed to have it. Things do come up and we will be adding those appropriately. And there's still three ways between now and the next agenda or the next board meeting to add things. Uh, well, tonight, a motion can be made to add something. Uh, if, if three individuals email the superintendent, uh, those items get added to a future agenda. So there, there are ways to, to get... And, and th at the next meeting. And, and at the next meeting, uh, if it's an emergency situation, it can be added uh, when we approve the agenda. Mr. Mr. Chair. All right. I had both. <laughs> both and Dr. Scott, did you, were you one of the voices? Yes. yes Just want to say, um, what made you guys to come, come up with this decision with not having a conversation with the entire board? Because I truly disagree with not having an agenda meeting. And that's why you have other cabinet members where if it's not something that's feasible for you to attend, then other board members can attend. But I surely don't want to do away with not having agenda meetings. That's part of the purpose of meeting with the superintendent weekly to go over the agenda and to hear what we have to say. Although I don't attend those meetings because it's normally for the officers unless they designate it to someone else. So I've allowed them to um, be accountable for the positions that they hold. However, to just do away with it, why don't you just consider a different day? Because if the following day is not feasible for the superintendent and the board chair, it's your discretion to move that to a different day. You know, the chair has the right to decide on what day the agenda meeting is going to take place. So if that's something where we need to make a motion and have a board discussion, but I don't think doing away with an agenda meeting is feasible for the board. Thank you. All right. Uh, there, there was someone on, on the other, Ms. Porter and then Ms. Agostini. From what I'm looking at, at the ways that we can put items on the agenda, both of them include board members. Um, and my concern is that something take place within those two weeks on the other side of things, where if Richland 2, if the district has items that they would like for us to consider, and it happens between those two weeks, um, 
and it's there isn't a, a table for us to have that discussion or hear that suggestion out aside from the agenda meeting. Um, I'm sure we can get an, an email here or there, but then the email has to be sent a certain way, and then not everyone, the back and forth happens, the exchange of emails. I would prefer having that at the agenda meeting and a discussion being made with all the information presented. I just think two weeks is a long time where if something comes up and it needs to be added, I would like for all voices to be able to have a piece in that discussion. Okay, thank you, Ms. Agassiz. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. The, my other concern would be our policy, BEDB, board agenda. And it starts off with the superintendent in cooperation with the board chair, chairman will prepare the agenda for all meetings. One or more additional board members may attend each agenda setting meeting so long as there is no quorum. So um, we would need to change board policy. I, I, I will not disagree with that. The one thing, though, that I... and, and Anybody in the public that would like to read this eight-page um, opinion by the Attorney General's office, it's dated August 26, 2019, and it was uh, issued to Richland School District 1. So if you Google those words, the first hit will be this, this uh, opinion. And in this opinion, after discussing it with uh, Dr. Moore, I'm of the opinion that a agenda planning meeting, regardless if it's a quorum or not, needs to be noticed. So having said that, we cannot have the meeting in the morning because we don't have 24 hours to notice it. And we will need to move the meeting down here. I, uh, Dr. Moore, will you be available sometime Thursday morning for us to have this meeting? And, and Mr. Mr. Chair, can I just add something? Yes, Dr. I, Scott. I just want to... Gosh. Okay. I just want to remind everyone that a school board meeting is that a school board meeting. We decide what we're going to do and when we're going to have these meetings. And the superintendent calendar is, should be in line with the agenda planning date that we as the board come up with. So what I would suggest, because it's late notice if Dr. Moore has something on her calendar for Thursday, we're not going to ask her now this short notice to just change it. But my suggestion would be that you and Dr. Moore get together and decide that you're going to have agenda meetings every Thursday or every Friday following the school board me meeting and the time. Because what we're not going to do and I did say what we're not going to do, or what we ain't going to do, is sit here and work around the superintendent's calendar when we are the board and these are our board meetings. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would like to share a few items of information that I think will be relevant. We had talked about, in fact, before I was board chair and those in the room that, that if I'm wrong, please correct me, I'm almost certain that we had the agenda planning meeting the Wednesday after the board meeting? Yes. Okay. So literally in 13 hours, we would be having the agenda. I, as chairman, asked to move that down the road a little bit so that we would give people an opportunity to, for, for things to come up and it would be much easier to to have a, a legitimate planning meeting a week later. As we did that, we discovered that it, we weren't able to get the, uh, uh, the agenda with the information on it to board members in a timely manner that allowed them to have more than a weekend to look at things like student appeals and all these other things. So we have decided just recently to move it back to the Wednesday after the agenda planning meeting. I mean, the uh, board meeting tonight. So literally, the plan was to have it tomorrow. After reading this opinion by the state attorney general's office, I am convinced, and, and it, it, I, I, let me add, add a little something to it. We went to a, a, a school board association conference, and at that conference, they elaborated a lot on these kind of things. I spoke with some of our colleagues in neighboring districts, and they noticed their school board, or they notice their agenda planning meetings. So we have made the decision after reading this opinion and talking to our colleagues that we will need to notice those meetings. Well, if we, if we, we can't do the meeting tomorrow like was originally planned because it's not 24 hours to notice it. So that, that 
that keeps us from doing what we had planned to do. So we, we have to work out something with the superintendent and her schedule. Mr. Chair. Yeah, Ms. Agostini. Well, with all due respect, you had that um, opinion from the uh, AG last week is when you forwarded it to me, so there would have been plenty of time to do notification. I, at this point, would respectfully request that um, you and the superintendent exchange emails to find a convenient time for the two of you to meet and extend the invitation to the rest of the board and then revisit how we're going to proceed. I would continue to like to see it the Wednesday morning afterwards. You all pick a day, let the board know, and then let's move forward. I, thank you, Ms. Agostini. I would like to ask a question of the members of the board. What, what do you as individuals think will change between right now and 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? Uh, and I, I'm just asking a legitimate question. I cannot think of anything that would change where we'd, we would do something different with the agenda. But, but regardless, we will, we will have a meeting. Me and, me and Dr. Moore will come up with a, plan, well, a date as soon as possible so that we can have it and get the agenda to everyone for them to be able to look at student appeals, contract on matters, and whatever else is on the executive session as well as any presentations anyone would like to look at. Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Washington. Um, thank you so much. Um, I don't think it's, um, I don't think the issue is doing it tomorrow because of course we understand the notice part. Um, but I do think in continuing the tradition that has already been set and that we have allowed to happen in the past if we just give the notice um, to the public um, for whatever date is selected. And the current um, draft is, is done. I don't think anybody else wants any additional things added, but if something should come up, um, you and Dr. Moore would need to share that information with the board, as always. But I would like to see going forward, even if we have to go back to this in April, that we do put those meetings back on, because it does give other board members a chance to have their voice and to be able to share. And that's something that we talked about with the last previous chair. Um, and so I do think it is a, it's a good idea for us to keep that up. And then in June, the board can decide if they would like to do something different. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will now move Mr. on Chair, to. Oh, before we go oh, on, I, I did want to add McFadden. something to the agenda. Oh, okay. So um, we already have our 2024 SCSBA legislative solutions that have hit um, the website. So I would like to add that to our agenda meeting because what we need to do is we have that class three officer proposition that we sent last year dur during our delegate assembly. However, what they want us to do is to um, submit that in the spring so that they can actually get it on this resolution so that when they get ready to vote for it, it's already on there. So I would like to bring that to the board so that we we can actually send the letter back down there so that we can get it added to the 2024 SCSBA legislative resolution. Okay. Would you like to make a motion to add that to the agenda? Yes, sir. Do we have Do we have to make a motion to do that? Now? Okay. If If you do, it will definitely be on the agenda okay. if it's approved. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to um, add the 2024 SCSBA legislative resolutions to our agenda. Is there a board member meeting? Is there a second? Second. All right. The motion was made by Mrs. Uh, McFadden and seconded by Mrs. Porter. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chair, I do have one question. Yes, Ms. Washington. Um, May I please ask a clarifying question yes. to Ms. McFadden? Um, can you just clarify? Are you, we're just going to we're just going to vote to give you give you permission to submit that to the school board association? We're not voting on all the uh, we're not talking about all the other things. Well, well, just on that one item. Yes, just the okay. one item to be placed on on what they have right now. Yes, okay, thank you. Yes, if I understand you correctly, Ms. McFadden, you, you are wanting to, what we had adopted and asked them to do at the actual legislative delegation, we want to, we want to have that submitted to them so that they can have it for everyone else to look at ahead of time. Yes, yes.
All right, Miss McFadden, is that? Uh, let's see. I believe so your motion needs to mention the class three officer legislation. So, yes, sir. So what I would like to do is have that on there. And so when we get to that portion, then that will be an action item to vote on what I'm going to bring, which is the same sheet. So that's why I want to add the resolution to it. Yes, specifically reference that, that item. Okay. Um, so I want... I move to add the 2024 SCSBA legislative resolution to the March 26, 24, 26, 2024 agenda with the class three officer proposal. All right, does that reflect what we want to have added? Ms. Porter, is that the motion you seconded? Okay. All right, board members, as soon as my computer comes back up, we can vote. All right, board members, please vote. Vote is seven yes, zero no. The motion carries. We will now move Mr. to. Mr. Chair? Oh, yes, Ms. Porter. So I just need to I have a clarifying question. Yes. Earlier, you asked that Dr. Moore add 4.5 yes. to the agenda. Did that, is, did that not require a vote because you're chair? I'm confused. Mrs. Porter, Just help me. it was a continuation of the discussion that we had in executive session today earlier, so we need to carry that over because we didn't finish the discussion. So that would not require a vote, I mean, in my opinion. Okay. I just wanted to make yeah. sure. Because we need to take care of that. I mean, that's an action item that needs to be, to be addressed. It's not like a new member proposing an idea or a concept, okay. do you? Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Ms. Agassini. All right, we'll now move to board and superintendent comments. We will start with Dr. Scott. But anyway, um, thank you guys. I'm just excited that we're getting out early, so I guess my little um, tantrum last week worked. So, see what happens when you... No, I'm just joking. So, first I want to say thank you to the two sweet peas. When I don't know your name, I call you sweet peas. From, I think, CFA and Bridge Creek. And I, it reminded me of Mrs. Tagara Charles when she was a kindergarten teacher and she would always have her students to start off the morning with, I am somebody. So thank you for um, reminding us that we are someone. So thank you for that. Also want to give a shout out to April Morgan, who's one of our teachers, brilliant teachers over at Westwood High School. She and her students won an award with Attendance Matters, the 2023-2024 poster and video contest. So kudos to April Morgan and her wonderful students over there. 
And also, um, on April 20th, I know this is a long way off, but I want you guys to save the date for Stump Out Crime. And I'm sharing this because I know I'm part of the safety and security um, committee here. And this group, Hush No More, along with um, the City of Columbia and some other partners are really going to have so many vendors out there and so many activities um, for the students to learn um, safety, school safety, home safety, community safety, and all of that. So if you are available on April 20th, please come out. It will be held from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. And then the budget meeting. Um, we had a budget meeting at 5 o'clock today, and I receive too many emails about what you guys want us to do with the budget and how much different departments should get more money and we should do this and we should do that. But the only people that I saw here today speaking on behalf of themselves were the speech language pathology group. So I want to say kudos to you guys for being brave enough and bold enough to come before us and ask for what you want. I'm going to encourage the other teachers, TA bus drivers, um, uh, principal secretaries at the elementary level, and so many more. We need to hear from you. We need to hear your voice, not saying that it's going to happen, but at least you put us on notice about what's important to you. So I really want to see you guys at the ne next budget meeting, which is the next school board meeting at 5 o'clock p.m. Don't just send us emails. We want to see your beautiful faces up at the mic telling us what you need and why you think we should support that. And then I just want to say thank you so much because it's still early and other people have to talk and we can get out of here before 9 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Mrs. Agostini. Thank you, Mr. Trapp. I want to start off um, thanking Mrs. Washington for the inspiring, inspirational moment. For those that couldn't see these two cute girls' faces, wow, it was just a thrill to watch them. Also, thank you to the uh, calendar committee for the hard work putting um, the the next calendar together for us. We really appreciate when our advisory committees come and step up and help us out. Um, thanks for those who came to speak at public participation. And I too want to recognize it was Ashley Patton from the speech language language pathology um, group and she brought along a lot of cohorts with her who came to support her to uh, lobby for their efforts. And I am grateful that not only did they um, write us emails, but they backed up their email by coming and speaking to us in person. And then finally, with St. Patrick's Day just around the corner, I want to leave with the Irish blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the, may the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Have a great night. Thank you, Mrs. Agostini. Mrs. McFadden. I'm going to be short and sweet. Y'all have a good night. It's been a great meeting. Um, we'll see y'all in about two weeks. By the way, the Legislative Committee is meeting um, this coming Thursday at, um, at 5.30. So if anyone wants to come out to offer suggestions or anything, we're open then. 5.30 on um, the 14th. Thank you, Mrs. McFadden. Mrs. Washington. I just want to say thank you to all of the teachers and employees who have shared their input today, either via email or in person, for the 2025 budget priorities. Your voices matter and you're greatly appreciated for all of your service. Congratulations to our track teams. It is track season. They've been placing in various competitions over the past few weeks, and that includes Blythewood, Richland Northeast, and Ridgeview. And my alma mater, Arnie, is hosting a track competition this Saturday at 9 a.m. And food trucks are going to be there. So I'm excited. Um, and I also want to say thank you to our calendar committee and to all of our other district committees that are working with our administration to collaborate on various initiatives for Richland, too. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Washington. Mrs. Nash. Okay, so we can get out of here early. I'm going to run through this. Um, one of the things I got to do, I wasn't here a meeting or two ago, but I got to read to Bridge Creek, and that was really cool. And so those kids were awesome. But also my husband got to go to Sand Lapper and do um, men read, real men read, and it was wonderful, and he had a great time. So he wanted me to extend his uh, joy that he had. And a lot of the kids were really shocked when they realized he was the car guy 
guy. And so that became a whole thing um, and a lot of excitement over at Santa Lapper. So thank you all um, for having him there. And then um, it was really cool to see a highlight come through um, about Luther Bells and him being like he's, you know, from. Uh, Westwood, and just to see his character continue on. A lot of times you start out in life, and then you get out in the real world, and things change, and you kind of get broken down, or just life happens. But it is so good to see his consistency, and his character, and his convictions, and his willingness to give back. He's giving a scholarship, trying to get a scholarship together to give back to Westwood, and I just want to say, commend him on that. Also, Michaela Spencer, thank you so much for being here. I know you don't want to be a place, but I am. She she also serves on our safety and security committee and they have some wonderful ideas and even just talking about legislation about vaping near schools they are some of the brightest people on that safety and security committee and so I just want to thank you for being here tonight for yet another thing um, but it's really awesome to see you and everybody else you all have a wonderful night get to bed early thank you mrs. Nash mrs. Porter Thank you. Um, I want to say Happy Women's History Month, and thank you to our two guests who um, reminded us of that as well. We appreciate you. Also, um, thank you to the toys or Teacher of the Years that attended the education conversations. It was we had some really great conversations, and they also mentioned some items for the uh, budget season as well, um, and shared how much they appreciate our floaters and our extra monitors within our schools. Um, thank you, ESSER funds. Um, not reoccurring money, as Miss Nancy would want me to remind everyone. <laughs> um, and then uh, also congratulations to our Ridgeview for a basketball champions. Um, that was an excellent sight to see, and um, they did well. Also, thank you for those who attended uh, this board meeting. We had a good crowd today. Um, and also uh, March 26th, don't forget, the 5 p.m. budget meeting. I, too, Dr. Scott, want to see more people attend and share their voices so that it doesn't just come from um, ourselves, um, but come in public and share what those needs are. Um, congratulations to the Future Chef winners. I enjoyed um, hearing about that. I believe there's a little girl named Emma who was really proud of her winnings um, that shared that with me. So thank you and congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Porter. Uh, Dr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and a lot of what I wanted to say has already been covered, but I want to ask a question. Richland, two employees, did you know that you can earn $250 in referral bonus through the end of May when you refer a certified teaching staff member such as teachers, school psychologists, counselors, etc.? Now, when this new employee signs their contract, you get your money. $250 per person. There are also no limits on the number of referral bonuses you can earn. So if you have five friends, you will get five times $250. That's right. Clap again. Yes. <laughs> so help us find those great teachers and bring them to Richland too. Go to R2HQ page for more information. So please help us out. We do want to congratulate Ridgeview's basketball team for their 4A. Uh, here's an interesting fact that I learned. This is their fifth championship in seven years. Can we say dynasty? I'm just saying. We said the Chiefs win another Super Bowl, they are dynasty with four. This is their fifth in seven years, I think, dynasty. Um, the team will be playing in a national tournament later this month, which is an amazing honor, and therefore they will be unable to be honored at our March 26th meeting, but we will definitely recognize them in April. And then last but not least, we had a hackathon. So we've just concluded our fourth annual hackathon event. About 150 students from all five high schools, as well as Summit Park Middle, will be hacking. Uh, this will be a hacking student-led solutions to challenges in our schools and our communities. A panel of judges assesses the pitches, and R2 Innovates will fund and support several of the top ideas as they implement their project this spring before the school year is out. We look forward to seeing what solutions they engineer. With that, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Uh, I, I will be very brief because I'm, I want to get home before Andy Griffith goes off. But um, 
But I, I would like to apologize for my, uh, just, I, I accessed the wrong file in my brain earlier. It just clicked on the right, wrong icon or something, and I, I apologize for that. The, the only thing I would like to add to what we've done here tonight is we all didn't agree on everything here tonight, it, but that's okay because that, we're all here to, to uh, contribute in our own way. We, we need to do what we think is right, and if someone else uh, wins the day, well, that, that, that's okay. We're a team, and I think that's the way it ought to work. And I appreciate all my board members for the, the hard work you do and uh, for, the, for the camaraderie we, we have here. And I just would like to say that, you know, the, obviously, there's some things in the future we're going to have to work on, especially with this information, uh, with our concerns about FOIA and things like that. But uh, we'll we'll make it work out, and we'll do whatever the board wants to do. And having said that, could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mr. Chair. Ms. Washington. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the March 12, 2024 board meeting. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Mrs. Washington, seconded by Dr. Scott. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. It is unanimous. We are adjourned.